This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to talk about four basic fueling methods. Alpha N, speed density, mass airflow, and ITB mode. The first one I'd like to talk about is Alpha N. This is your basic engine. We'll see this drawing several times today. Alpha N is a method that was created back in the 70s, I believe, by Morelli Far Ferrari, probably for the Formula One cars, possibly for the streetcars. What it used was the throttle position sensor, a sensor that measures the angle of the throttle plates. Right here, it's in yellow. By the way, the critical sensors are all in yellow. We have the TPS, the manifold air temperature, the coolant for warm up, and the crank position sensor. Sometimes we have in the calculation the barrel or the barometric pressure. Notice that with this method, there are two extremely critical sensors. The TPS, if this goes down, we have no way to calculate how much fuel to bring in, and the crank position sensor. You have to know how fast the motor is spinning. The next method is speed density. Notice the TPS is no longer a critical sensor, often only used for acceleration enrichment and flood clear. The critical sensors are all in yellow. Barrow, MAP, manifold air pressure, or manifold absolute pressure, and the manifold air temperature, sometimes intake air temperature is what it's called. And coolant for, again, warm-up and the crank position sensor down at the bottom. What this basically does is uses the calculations from what's known as the ideal gas law that we can calculate the density of the air inside the intake manifold using the manifold air pressure and the manifold air temperature and the speed at which the motor is running to determine how much air is making it into the combustion chamber. The next one we'd like to talk about is mass airflow. What this sensor does is sits in the intake manifold before the throttle plates and literally measures the airflow going past it. Notice that none of the other sensors are particularly critical except for the coolant again for warm up and the crank position sensor. The disadvantage of this method is if the mass airflow is knocked out for whatever reason, you're out of business. These mass airflows tend to be a little delicate. There is literally a heated wire in these things, at least in the Ford version of a mass airflow. And any moisture like water getting in the air filter or possibly dirt that gets on the heated wire can drive these things nuts. The manifold air temperature is normally built into the mass airflow. In our case, we usually do have a manifold air temperature sensor that we put in that's optional, uh, mostly for data purposes. Same thing with the map. ITB mode. What this does is measures the manifold air pressure, and any time that we're, in theory, above about 90 kPa, we will go into alpha N mode. Below 90 kPa, most of your driving around the street is done in speed density. The critical sensors are the barrow, your throttle position sensor when you're in alpha N mode, your map in manifold air temperature for when you're in speed density mode, and again, the coolant and crank position sensor. So the question comes up fairly often, what about the speed of these sensors? Is one method better than the other? So what we did was a little experimentation. We used two motors. One was a Honda ITB motor. You can see the independent throttle bodies at the top. We also used a different motor that happened to have a typical intake manifold over here. Your throttle body is sitting right here. The air comes from an air box through a mass airflow through a fairly smooth tube to get laminar airflow. And what we did was made this motor essentially run on speed density, but we used the mass airflow for information. So here's what we found. 
what we're looking at is the map at the top in white, the RPM in yellow. Notice that we're spinning around 6,300 RPM, and we suddenly get out of the throttle. You can see that in the green down below, where you get a sudden drop in throttle position. Notice that the manifold air pressure is slightly delayed to the throttle position. At the bottom, what we're looking at is these are engine cycles. It is about two engine cycles behind the TPS that the map notices that you've gotten out of the throttle. If you look at the bottom, that happens to be, you might not be able to see it, but that's only 45 thousandths of a second. So now this happens to be a supercharged motor spinning along at, in this case, about 7,000 RPM. Again, we have a sudden lift in the throttle position. And notice that the manifold air pressure is delayed. It happens to be, if you can see it down to the bottom, about 55 thousandths of a second delayed, or again, about three engine cycles. The delay is relatively short. In the next view, what I have is a car that is running a mass airflow. The entire shift took 14 engine cycles of the motor. But as the driver lifted out of the throttle, and unfortunately we don't have throttle position in this log, but you can see the map drop, and in the next trace down in green is the mass airflow. If you notice, the mass airflow does have a slight delay, but it's only about one engine cycle worth of time. Same thing as the guy gets back into the throttle, the map rises, and the mass airflow again is about one engine cycle behind the manifold air pressure. That's not too bad. What I've done is used the table generator in Megalog Viewer HD to generate along the bottom axis is RPM, throttle position is in the vertical axis, and in the middle is the volumetric efficiency. Notice that the range that I have to go with the TPS from zero to one degree, two degrees, four, six degrees, very small increments on the bottom end. At the top end, I jump from 60, 70, 85, and 100 percent throttle. But with this range of throttle position, notice that it's a nice smooth transition on the volumetric efficiencies. This happens to be the same motor, again, RPM at the bottom, manifold air pressure along the vertical axis, and volumetric efficiency out in the center. Again, this is the same motor as I showed before, but notice at about 90, 95, and 100 kPa, look at the huge rise in volumetric efficiency in a very small area of the manifold air pressure. This happens to be an ITB motor, and they are notorious for showing this trait. This motor would be very difficult to tune with a speed density system with huge variations in volumetric efficiency in a very few number of cells. So now what I've done is taken those same two views, one over the other, the one on the top is manifold air pressure. The one on the bottom is throttle position based. The same scaling that I was using on the previous. And you'll notice in the center, I have turned on the trace so that you can see where the motor is traveling through the maps. But what I've done is highlighted areas that are in effect. At the bottom on the TPS based system, you can see that most of the low speed driving all happens in about 12 cells or so. In a speed density system or map based, what we get is a lot of data in about 40 cells where if we tried to tune this car with TPS based, we'd be down in the neighborhood of about 12 cells on the same area of driving.
But notice when we start getting higher in the power range, as in yellow, the yellow boxes, a speed density system has most of the power happening, again, in about 20 cells. But if you were to tune the motor with TPS-based, you'd maybe have 100 cells or so. Here again, we've, we've generated a map from the same motor. And this happens to be manifold air pressure and RPM. And in the center is we have the average throttle position sensor that it took to get to this area of the map. If you notice, the red line is approximately where 20 degrees throttle is. In this view, you can see that the throttle position can easily be predicted because of the nice smooth transition all the way through this grid. We'll be able to use that to our advantage in a little bit. In this slide, what we're doing is showing RPM, TPS, and manifold air pressure. Again, I have the throttle position sensor set to very small resolution at the bottom. Up at the top, it's fairly wide. But notice you do have a fairly smooth gradient from purple up to red. What this proves is that TPS, throttle position, and RPM is pretty good at predicting the manifold air pressure. So now, remember our ITB boat. Let's look at that a little closer. What I've done is created a filter that basically just says, show me only data when I'm real close to 90 kPa. It's this curve we use to define the system in ITB mode to convert or change over from speed density at low power below the red curve to alpha N essentially on the top half of the curve. I'd like to thank the guys at TunerStudio.com, the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD that I'm using to develop all these graphs, DIY AutoTune that supplies all the parts and pieces we use to build the electronics on these cars, and also they supply the AMP EFI series of ECUs. And I'd also like to thank the people at MSExtra.com. Thank you for watching, and be sure to hit subscribe.